जय बाबा चैप्टर सेवन बाबा वॉज नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट वॉट अदर्स थॉट अबाउट हिम इट डिड नॉट मैटर टू हिम वॉट अदर्स कंसिडर हिम टू बी He was oblivious about people who ridiculed him or even thought him to be mad. He was perpetually seeped into a constant meditative state. In our previous chapter, he proved that it was no concern to him whether he had to serve somebody else as the only thing that mattered to Baba was that he was one with his creator. Allah Malik on his lips the chant in his heart and his very soul nothing was of more importance to baba than being in commune with the one the influx of true sufis and seekers kept coming to baba they would spend time with him seek his guidance and be guided by him on higher practices of growing on the path Baba never spoke too much about spiritual practices to the common villagers but with sufis and sages and the true seeker baba divulged much and guided tremendously it is with sadness that i say that we have lost those treasures of wisdom guidance and words there was nobody to keep a track of all that which transpired between baba and the spiritual aspirants abdul who was baba's faithful attendant still hadn't arrived maybe if abdul had been present there would have been some record of the conversation between sai and the spiritual seekers baba's routine very rarely changed he profusely hated any change in any kind of his routine he used to go to only a few particular houses to ask for food his schedule was like clockwork till he took samadhi but he was most liberal in thought he did not like any kind of orthodox behavior He was very wise and rational and yes very very short tempered God help you if he lost his temper curse words poured forth like a gushing volcano Baba loved spiritual living but was averse to a fanatical mindset He certainly did not care if some thought of him to be a muslim and others a hindu I feel that on purpose he kept confusing everybody about his true identity and birth. If some consider him to be a Hindu, he dressed like a Muslim fakir. If some took him to be a Muslim, his love for Lord Hanuman was known to one and all. He loved to celebrate the festival of Ram Navmi and later on he made sure that it got organized in shirdi in a big way but on the same auspicious night he gave the muslims permission to take out the sandal procession he himself would collect as many muslims and the sandal procession would be taken out in all its glory he thus got the ram navmi festival and the sandal procession organized on the same day with all pomp and glory Was he a Hindu or a Muslim? Does it really matter to us? For us, he is a Sai, beyond religion, beyond dogmas, beyond prejudices. During Ram Navmi celebrations, he would organize wrestling matches and would give away prizes, sometimes a horse and even a little gold or silver. When it was Lord Krishna's birthday he would arrange for food and merriment to conclude the festivals of Gokul Ashtami During Eid he would organize for food and make sure that the Muslims performed their prayers in large groups Baba's ears were pierced like a Hindu 
but he was in favor of circumcision. He would advocate reading of the first verse of the Quran before eating food when he ate food amongst the Muslims. But Hindu sages and Brahmins would prostrate themselves at his feet. He didn't seem to mind. Baba lived in a masjid but had earthen oil lamps burning and our very own dhuni which flamed perpetually. He lived in the masjid but allowed the practice of blowing of the conch and ringing of the bells and grinding grain in the hand mill. He lived in a mosque but there was offering of prasad and rice into the dhuni. As time passed, Aarti would be sung in Masjid Ai and people prostrated at his feet offered even oblations to him but all the time Baba chanted Allah Malik. He would eat meat and even fish with the fakirs but in the doorway of Masjid Ai there was a beautiful Tulsi plant growing and just near the Tulsi plant there was a wooden chariot engraved with auspicious signs which are so dear to the Hindus. Baba is an enigma. Why don't people still understand that he was and is beyond religion? No matter in which religion he was born, he had risen above religion and swam in the ocean of oneness. He would get kirtans performed and restore dilapidated temples to their former glory. Through Tatya Patil, Baba renovated the temples of Lord Shani, Lord Ganesha, Lord Siva, Goddess Parvati, and the village deity, the Gram Devi. He was not attached to money, power, women, food, status, comfort, nothing. Just nothing mattered to him other than the one. He was a king who was not attached to his kingdom but only wanted to help all those who came to him for guidance, protection, blessings and most of all, his pure selfless love. More and more people gravitated to Baba as Baba was not shy of performing miracles. Initially, he would not exhibit his powers so openly. He would do so discreetly, but as time passed, Baba began to perform miracles as though it was the most routine thing to do. Once Nana Sahib told Baba that nobody in Shirdi had to fear as Baba was the god of miracles and Baba said softly, No Nana, I do not perform miracles. You have village astrologers. They work two or four days ahead of time and give out their predictions. Some of them come true. I look further ahead. My art is also a sort of astrology, but you people do not understand this. To you, my words seem like magic because I can see into the future and you all cannot. So you regard events as proofs or miracles and turn your reverence unto me. I, on my part, turn your reverence unto God and see that you are really benefited. It is Allah who performs miracles through Sai. Sai is his faithful servant and friend. All I can do is protect my devotees and take upon myself their sorrows and sufferings at the will of Allah. That is all I can do. Peace be to all. Baba bless us with happiness, calmness and compassion. Jai Sai.